Please be seated, everyone. Okay, would the state please read the charge in this matter? Good morning. Good morning. In the Iowa District Court, in and for Double Work County, State of Iowa Plaintiff versus Todd Michael Mullis. Number FECR 012941. Trial information. Comes now, Double Work County Attorney John Bernard and Assistant Attorney General Denise A. Timmons as prosecuting attorneys. And in the name and by the authority of the state of Iowa, accuse Todd Mullis of murder first degree. Committed as follows. Todd Mullis, on or about the 10th day of November, 2018, in Double Work County, state of Iowa, did kill Amy Mullis in violation of Iowa Code Sections 707.1 and 707.2-1A. A true information, signed John Bernard, Delaware County Attorney, signed Denise A. Timmons, Assistant Attorney General. To this charge, the defendant has entered a plea of not guilty. Thank you. Okay, and whenever the state is ready for opening statement, go right ahead and beautiful woman. She was 39 years old. She was a daughter, a sister, an aunt, a friend, and a mother to her three young children. She was at her home on November 10th, 2018, and went outside to help do some work on her farm. But little did she know her death would come that morning. In Amy's last moments on this earth, she would feel the corn rake that she was stabbed with in her back. She would feel that rake pierce her body and fill with blood and air. And she would take those last breaths while she lie on a floor in a shed on her farm. Amy had so much life left to live. But that life was viciously taken from her on November 10th, 2018. Taken at the hands of this defendant. We would love for you to get to meet Amy, but you won't. Instead, you will share a courtroom with her killer. This brutal, senseless murder happened not far from here in a town called Earlville. And to understand what happened, we have to go back, back to November 2018 and the time before that. Amy was not happy. She was having an affair and she was planning on leaving the defendant. The defendant knew something was going on. Amy had previously had an affair and they had reconciled. But in July 2018, the defendant knew she was having another affair. He confronted Amy and she denied it, but that just wasn't good enough for him. There was still a lot of tension and distrust and the defendant had to do something. Over time, this kept weighing on the defendant. He wasn't going to let Amy get away with cheating on him again. And more importantly, he wasn't going to let Amy take half of his farm. You see, the defendant grew up on a farm. His father's a farmer, his brothers are farmers. He became a farmer himself. Being a farmer means everything to him. He has put his life into that farm. The defendant had to find a way to keep his farm. He couldn't let Amy leave him and take his money or land or half of his farm. That morning, when Amy walked out of her house on November 10th, 2018, to do chores on the farm, we'll all know by the end of this trial, that walk that she had taken hundreds of times out of her front door to the hog barn would be her last and would lead to her death. What made this day different than any other day was the defendant and his cold and calculated plan. 
November 10th, 2018, was finally the day that Amy's husband, of over 14 years, was going to carry out his plan. A plan he carefully waited to carry out until he felt like he had the perfect opportunity. The defendant made sure the only people at his farm that day were him, his wife, and his kids because he didn't want any other witnesses. He had gotten Amy outside to help do chores on the farm, and then he had to separate her so he could execute his plan. He sent Amy to a red shed to get something, and that's where he then attacked her and killed her. He used a corn rake because he tried to make it look like a farm accident. He was hoping that people would just feel sorry for him and not ask any questions. He then went back to the hog barn, distancing himself from the crime he just committed, acting like nothing happened. And what did he do then? He sent his 13-year-old son to go and find his mother, who he had just slaughtered. The defendant acted like he was upset. He had to. This was his big moment, what he had been practicing and planning for months. He immediately started telling his story. He told 911 she fell on a corn rake. The defendant believed he thought of everything, but what he didn't count on was what happened next. Nobody believed his story. The doctors and law enforcement knew something just wasn't right. The doctors could tell that Amy was struck at least two times in the back with the corn rake. This was not an accident. It was a homicide. The defendant's plan wasn't so perfectly thought out. Now you're going to hear a lot about Todd and Amy's relationship before this happened. And you're going to hear about how Amy was fearful of the defendant, how she told her friends and family members that she was planning on leaving him, but that she was afraid that if he found out she was having an affair, he would kill her. And she also told another friend that he would make her disappear. But wait, that's not all. Because what you're also going to hear is that the way that we know that the defendant planned this was after the police executed a search warrant on his house. They collected the defendant's iPad that is connected to his personal Gmail account. And they were able to see searches in the months before Amy's death, proof that he was planning to kill Amy, looking up things like how to kill unfaithful women. The evidence in this case is overwhelming. And the trail of evidence leads to only one place, to where Amy's murderer sits across this courtroom from you today. And make no mistake, the defendant earned this seat in this courtroom by what he did that day, November 10th, 2018. After you hear all the evidence in this case, the judge is going to instruct you on the law as it applies to the evidence. And then you will know that there is only one verdict. Only one verdict supported by both the law and the evidence, and only one just verdict, a verdict of guilty.